All right, so let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 6. And the woman, Israel, fled into the wilderness. So she knows that, uh, not she knows, we know that she is going to run away from the persecution of the Antichrist. We learned that at our last Revelation study. And God's going to feed her with manna. Keep reading. Where she hath the place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So Israel is going to a place where God prepares for them in the wilderness, is fed with manna from the heads of Leviathan, and she will be fed over there 1,260 days. So we see right here that Israel is going to be fed that long. Now, this is the next part where we're trying to study. Okay, so how long is this 1,260 days. This refers to the three and a half years of the tribulation, actually. So if we look at today's calendar system, it does not calculate up to three and a half years. But we're going to go by God's calendar, the Bible calendar, and then you can tell that this is going to be three and a half years. All right, what are several clues? The first clue is this. The Bible talks about 42 months. Throughout the tribulation, what is extremely interesting as you read your entire book of Revelation is that it keeps saying three and a half years, three and a half years, three and a half years. It's all over the book of Revelation. So that's how we can tell that this 1,260 days is going to meet up with that. So let's look up one example. One example is when you look at Revelation chapter 13 and then look at verse 5. Revelation 13, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue how long? Forty and two months. Now, if you calculate that, that obviously equals to three and a half years. If you don't believe me, then start counting in your head right now, okay? It is three and a half years. Anyways, this 1,260 days, we go by the biblical calendar. So let's start off with the book of Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7. Okay, Genesis 7. A biblical month, and you've learned this in your basic doctrine studies, one biblical month in the Bible is 30 days. Whereas in our calendar, it's not like nicely 30 days every month. That would be, make things much easier, but no, it's such a mess. You know, you got 28 days and you got a leap year and the 31 days and the 30 days. And it's like, who cares, you know? But the Bible is more clean. It's like just 30 days one month. That's it. All right. So let's read over here. Genesis chapter 7. Look at verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the what? Second month, the 17th day of the month, okay? So it's talking about Noah here, Noah's flood. So Noah, the rain poured, the flood started. I mean, read that verse, okay? Don't just believe me, right? The flood started. Notice it says right here, the second month, 17th day. That's when the water started, right? The same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. See, that's when the flood started, right? Now, look at Genesis chapter 8. Verse uh, 3 through 4. Verses 3 through 4. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days where the water abated, and the ark rested in the what? Seventh month on the what? Seventeenth day of the month. How convenient. The Holy Spirit made it simple for us so we can calculate easily. So notice right here it says the seventh month, right? That's when the flood was over. The waters were starting to recede, right? Seventh month, seventeenth day. Oh, how easy. See that? Oh, now it makes it simple. If it's the 21st day, then, ah, 
ah, you know, it would have messed up everything. So, if we're going to go by this, this is exactly in between five months, right? If it's in between five months, let's look back. Verse 3 says, the waters return from off the earth continually and after the end of the what? 150 days. See that? So, 150 days, what does that equal? So, notice right here, then it gets 3, 0. See that? So, that makes sense. Okay, you got that? All right, so 150 uh, divided by 5, and then what? It equals 30. It's going by days. Okay, so, thus, we know that one month is going to be 30 days. Okay. See, the Bible made it easy for you. Now let's go back. Who says, oh, they're just making things up. And No, you just don't read your Bible. <laughs> oh, Revelation, too mysterious. 1,260 days, whatever that means. And No, just read your Bible, and then you'll realize it's more simple than you think. Amen. Yeah. Like the seven-headed dragon, how are we able to interpret that? You just look at the Scriptures. And it will show you amazing answers that you didn't see before. See, people, they just don't study it, though. That's the thing. They try to make everything metaphorical. Why? Because it's too deep for them to understand. They're too lazy to look at all the scriptures that can show the interpretation. All right, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Now, notice right here, and there was war in heaven. Oh, so Star Wars. See, there's something going on over here. So notice over here that there's war out here in the universe, and there was war in heaven. Now, remember, this was where the stars were located, right? So uh, we already looked at that. If you read verse 4, see that? Remember, the dragon is where? In the stars of heaven. See that? At verse 4. So he's at the particular heaven where the stars are located. See that? So he's at that second heaven. Remember in the Bible there are three levels of heaven. One you hear, have, the first level is the sky. The second heaven right here is the universe, outer space, and the third heaven is where God lives. Now, in the second heaven where the stars are at, which is where the dragon is located, he's fighting, okay? He's fighting against uh, Michael, and he is fighting against the other angels of God up there. So as he's fighting against Michael, the archangel, and then all the other angels, they actually lose. Now, Michael, Amen. Michael, he actually, when he fights against Satan, he knows that of his own ability that he cannot conquer Satan, actually. So you got to realize that. You might say, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, uh, look at the book of Jude. We're going to look at several passages here. So look at the book of Jude. And then I want you to go to Daniel 12. So notice that Michael, he does not even dare to fight against Satan. Because why? That's how powerful Satan is. We're going to look at the book of Jude. Now notice that when they were contending, fighting over the body of Moses, Michael the archangel didn't do anything. He didn't dare bring a rallying accusation. All he did was surrender the devil to Jesus Christ, Amen. to God. And that's important for a Christian is that you've got to do that. If you don't surrender the devil to God, then you got to realize this. If you feel like, oh, I can bind Satan in the name of Jesus and I can tackle him, you don't know what you're messing with. The best thing is, look, I don't want to mess with this devil. I'm going to surrender him to you, Father. Yeah. And I can only conquer the devil when I completely surrender him to you and nothing, absolutely nothing of myself. All right, look at Jude verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the de devil... He disputed about the body of Moses. Look at this. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said the Lord. See, not you. The Lord rebuked thee. Now look at the book of Daniel chapter 12. Why is Michael the archangel coming down here at Revelation? Because 
Michael the archangel, his role is going during the tribulation. Now remember, the attention is on the woman, correct? Remember that? The woman? Uh, I feel like I'm going to mess up over here. All right. So remember, she was pregnant with child over here. And then she had the moon underneath her feet and then the sun upon her head. And then we also saw the star surrounding her, right? Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. The woman is supposed to be who? Israel. The reason why Michael the archangel is coming down is he's representing Israel. That's why they're both mentioned in the same chapter. But the Christian church, as we've already noticed at Revelation chapter 4, the Christian church is already raptured up to heaven. See that? So because the Christian church is already raptured up to heaven, so, ah, okay. So because the Christian church is already raptured up to heaven, that's why we know that the church has a separate program Amen. from the nation of Israel. Nation of Israel, down on earth, in the tribulation, Michael the archangel intervenes. The church raptures up to heaven while Michael the archangel starts his rule at the tribulation and comes down. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. So notice right here, this is why we definitely have to believe in a pre-tribulation rapture of the church and putting a separate program to the nation of Israel. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. All right, at Jude, we read Michael the archangel, right? Notice it says the archangel. So when somebody tries to give you this weird teaching that, that there are three archangels or five archangels, where it goes with Michael, Lucifer, Gabriel, Leonardo, and Raphael, and all the Teenage <laughs> Mutant Ninja Turtles, I kid you not, the book of Enoch mentions stuff like that. So a lot of people online get into caught up with this Gnostic garbage yeah. that's going around. So you got to realize this, the book of Enoch, yes, it has some interesting part that can contribute to the Genesis 6 account, but guess what? So does Greek mythology. So does Babylonian paganism. And your pastor reads these quotes just for what? Just to filter it out and see what is historical truth in the lenses of the Bible. That's it. Everything else, you can call it mush. So you got to realize that. You can't take Enoch as scripture. But anyways... Um, so, uh, it says Michael, the archangel, it says the archangel, meaning then it's as if there's only one archangel. Yeah. Now look at this, first Thessalonians chapter four and look at verse, uh, first Thessalonians chapter four, verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the what voice of the archangel. There's a descending going on with the archangel, Michael, and with the trump of God, but who's ascending, who's raptured, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Look at that. So notice right here, the church goes up and raptured when the archangel starts to come down. But this woman, Israel, there is no record of her going up. It's only the child that goes up, right, we saw? Yeah. The woman is actually left behind when the dragon comes down on the earth. She stays there longer. See that? So there is no doubt there, there has to be a dispensational teaching where Israel is the group that goes through the tribulation, whereas the church is the one that leaves yeah. before the tribulation.